We're here today at the University of Kentucky Horticulture Research Farm to take a look at their Good Agricultural Practices, or GAP, certified vegetable operation. The Horticulture Research Farm is around 100 acres. It's been part of the UK farm community since uh, the 1950s. This last year, uh, we were asked to be part of a research project uh, investigating the uh, potential uh, for uh, Kentucky farmers to start uh, doing wholesale production, in particular to sell to the UK dining services. And that's really, I, keep, I think, spearheaded uh, uh, you know, a movement within the university to try to uh, better prepare farmers and demystify some of the aspects of this gap audit. And so there's multiple people working on this. We've got a great committee now, and there's a lot of efforts uh, from extension, research perspective, education perspective, really pulling in the three parts of the land grant mission to try to help farmers be prepared uh, for the gap audit process and really look at uh, the potential to increase local foods production uh, as part of this uh, UK opportunity. So one of the requirements is for farmers to uh, go through the third party gap audit. And so we went through that so that we could ourselves become gap certified, but much more importantly to really investigate the, uh, you know, the strengths and the weaknesses of the gap program in terms of what farmers would be interested in here and maybe uh, create a situation where farmers could come learn from our farm and how we've approached each step in the gap process. So we started really January, February range to put the food safety manual together. So they tell you right up front, this is how you're going to be tested. Here's each category. Here's the things you have to fulfill. And so we walked through that, you know, over a series of uh, several weeks to make sure that we were uh, complying on everything, or at least as much as we could. Once the audit was scheduled, uh, the inspector came, I think, in May or June this year. And uh, that was like a full day process going through. The first audit is, I think, longer than the, the subsequent ones. And uh, we went through that process and uh, learned a whole lot in the, in the experience. And then they came back just a couple of weeks ago for the second, what they call the unannounced audit. So it's, two, it's a two-part uh, audit step in terms of the inspector coming to your farm per year. Today's harvest process starts even before heading to the field. Preparation, including sanitation, is a crucial good agricultural practice. Anything coming in contact with the food must be sanitized. The sanitizer of choice is a diluted, food-grade bleach mixture. Boxes are brought out of storage onto a clean, sanitized pallet. Since the crew will be field packing into new, clean boxes, there's no need to sanitize them. But if you harvest into reusable plastic crates, you want to make sure that they're clean and sanitized too. We can't forget the thing that comes in contact with food the most, workers' hands. The crew washes their hands with soap and water every time before harvest, after bathroom breaks, and before and after eating. There's one last pre-harvest step. While the other workers are washing up, Aaron heads to the field to do a quick pre-harvest check. He's looking for evidence of animal feces, footprints, or damage. If he sees evidence of an animal in the field, he flags it so workers will know not to harvest from that plant or any others within the established boundary. With sanitized equipment, clean hands, and a completed pre-harvest check, the crew is ready to harvest. With the aid of the conveyor, harvesting and packing will happen simultaneously. The team at this farm has elected to use sheets of paper to line the bottoms of boxes they pack, adding another layer of protection from possible contamination. A second sheet is placed over the top to minimize any contamination from above. The harvest process will last several hours and depends on the order size for that day. Ambient temperature and worker speed will determine how frequently the harvested crops need to be transported to the cooler. A tarp will be used to cover the packed boxes to protect them from bird droppings. Once enough food has been harvested, the crew heads to the packing shed to unload.